All right, everyone. Welcome back to the land of Kel. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is episode 101, and today I will be discussing the function of the Pyramid of Wunis, hereafter known on this channel as the Crystal Pyramid, due to its unique utilization of white calcite crystal. And I'll be explaining the primary mechanism of operation that was involved in the chemical reaction sequence that was once occurring within its final synthesis chamber. If this is a type of content you're interested in regarding the function of the Egyptian pyramids, please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube. Don't forget to click that little notification bell so that you do not miss the new episodes that premiere twice per week. Like, comment, and stay tuned. If you want to help support this channel, check out the Land of Chem members only section for exclusive research related content and unreleased footage that you will not see anywhere else. In this month's members only episode, I'll be releasing the full chemical analysis of the iron oxide deposits surrounding the trial passages on the Giza Plateau and the never before seen footage from my second expedition to the Lost Pyramid in Dashur. If you want to grab a copy of the book or pick up some merch, check out thelandofchem.com. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. And don't forget to check out our new channel here on YouTube, Egypt Eats, for food review content featuring the fantastic restaurants here in Egypt. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode, beginning with this diagram of the Crystal Pyramid, showing the internal components and indicating their composition, with the primary inlet shaft here, made from limestone. This section of the structure, with the three valves being made from red granite, the three reaction chambers here, also made from limestone, and this green section of the final reaction chamber being constructed from huge blocks of white calcite crystal. And those of you that were paying close attention during Sunday Site Visit 27 may have heard me explaining to my tour group how the final reaction chamber located here at number six on this diagram once functioned. So today I will be breaking it down in detail and you can now see an image of this chamber with the black gray wet container here, the limestone portion in the front of the chamber here, the calcite crystal section in the back of the chamber here, the vaulted ceiling here, and the most critical detail of the construction, the separation between the walls of the chamber and the vaulted ceiling that houses a channel running through this section. And I will put in a quick video clip so you can see this component for yourself. Okay. Oh, there's no one in here. Hell yeah. All right, so all I have a chance. channel because this is one very significant difference about the construction of this monument and I wish I could get back there and see where this leads because this is a conduit a channel that is connected into the vaulted ceiling or the upper reaction chamber on both sides going around
All right, everyone, just a quick reminder that if you want to help support the channel, just check out thelandofchem.com. I have the new six degree Green Lion logo, the fifth degree Central Pyramid Hydrochloric Acid logo, the new second edition print copy of the Land of Chem book, this beautiful new Egyptian blue edition, signed copies, extremely rare, only 89 copies in existence of the original first edition purple orchid paper print of the Land of Chem book are also available all at thelandofchem.com. So if you want to show some love, just check out the website. And from the bottom of my heart, thank you all so much for the support. All right, now that you've seen its internal configuration, how did this chamber work? Well, let's take a look at a simple distillation setup that is utilized to separate two liquids with different boiling points. For example, as shown here in this diagram, a mixture of acetone and water. The flask containing the two liquids is heated. The acetone, which has a lower boiling point than water, will begin to release vapor that rises up out of the solution, flowing into the condenser column where it is cooled and condenses back into a liquid that is then collected over here. Thus separating the acetone from the water that remains in the original flask. And here is another image for visualization purposes with the heating element down here, the mixture solution here, the cooling condenser here, and the collection beaker down here on the right. So how does this apply to the crystal pyramid? Well, let's configure our pyramid reaction chamber with a condenser on both sides like this. Starting to look familiar yet? Again, the heating element down here in the center, the mixture of liquids here, a vaulted condenser system that leads into your collection beakers on each side. Okay, now let's make it a little bit more clear. With your black Greywek container, the heating element for the system down here in the center, the liquid mixture filling the chamber here, the vaulted condenser ceiling here, and the troughs for collection of the aqueous product here and here. All right, now let's apply this reaction process to the final reaction chamber of the crystal pyramid, which you can see again here. And hopefully the light just went off and you can now see the system in operation. But let's break it down again one more time. Remember, as I mentioned in the last several episodes, as proven during episode 88, anytime you see black stone, think thermoregulatory and heat retention properties. And episode 88 is an absolute watch. And if you haven't seen it yet, I'll put a link in the video description below. In simplified terms, if you see black stones within the construction, you know that this area or component of the structure got hot and stayed hot. So this black container is the heating element for the distillation process. Next. The container is heated, a process that I will be fully explaining in an upcoming series, the power source of the Egyptian pyramids. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, things are really heating up, both literally and figuratively. So please subscribe and stay tuned. The chamber is then filled with your mixture of two liquids. In this case, the desired product being more volatile with a lower boiling point. And for illustration purposes, I've done them both in two slightly different colors, which you can see here and here. This aqueous mixture is then heated, releasing the vapor from the desired product out of the solution into the vault of the upper chamber. This vaulted ceiling functions like a condenser column that cools the vapor back into liquid, which then flows down the sloped ceiling. The desired product, now separated from the mixture solution in the chamber, is then collected out of the system through the conduit leading out of these troughs. Now recall from our previous discussions 
that there is communication encoded throughout these pyramids. And it just so happens that the ceiling of this chamber is covered in stars that are painted with Egyptian blue. Well, there's been a lot of research conducted recently on the properties of this blue paint, as presented back in episode 66, also a critical episode linked in the video description below. And you can see here from an article on Egyptian blue from the Berkeley Laboratory that Egyptian blue, a color developed by Egyptians thousands of years ago, has a modern day application as well. The pigment can boost energy efficiency by cooling rooftops and walls. Sound familiar? Cooling properties indicated on a ceiling that was utilized as a cooling condenser column. But of course, now, I don't think that the builders of these structures adorned the inside of their chemical reactors with stars or paint. But I do believe the knowledge of what these structures were capable of was symbolically encoded within, intended to communicate to future generations what these structures were really used for. In this case, the Egyptian blue on the ceiling, communicating the function of the ceiling to cool and condense the product vapor that was once being produced inside this chemical reaction chamber. Now, three questions you should be asking yourself are, what was this chemical product? How was this black container heated? And how did the calcite crystal function within this chamber and reaction sequence? All of these questions will be answered in some monumental upcoming episodes. So please subscribe and stay tuned. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 101, The Function of the Crystal Pyramid, part one. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. And in the next episode of the series, we are now on Sunday Site Visit 29, featuring some exceptional footage from the land of Chem 2023 Ancient Alchemy and Ascension Tour on our day two expedition to the Red and Bent Pyramids of Dashur. If you are interested in joining in next year's 2024 Egypt Tour, please send me an email to contact at thelandofchem.com, subject line 2024 Egypt Tour. If this is the type of content you're interested in regarding the function of the Egyptian pyramids, please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube. Click that little notification bell, like, comment, and stay tuned. If you want to help support this channel, check out the Land of Chem members only section and thelandofchem.com if you want to grab some merch or pick up a copy of the book. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. Also, check out Egypt Eats, our new channel here on YouTube featuring food reviews from the fantastic restaurants here in Egypt. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's episode, so I will see you next time. Yo, are you still watching this? Please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button. New videos coming out every single week. And check out this other episode. Come on, do it. Do it now.